Good morning, St Luke's. Uh, here's the thing, we had some fish for tea last night, uh, but when we ate it, there wasn't any coin inside of it. Uh, we're looking at two uh, incidents that we find in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew uh, 17, uh, verse 24, through to chapter 18, verse 9. I say two little incidents that make up our reading today uh, and the first one involves a coin inside of a fish. In incident uh, chapter one some tax collectors come to Jesus and to his disciples. Their purpose is in gathering the temple tax. Uh, this was a payment that was made for the upkeep of the sanctuary of the temple and it related to the ransom tax that you'll find mentioned in Exodus chapter 30. Now their approach to Jesus uh, should be seen as polite uh, and also, in what I've said there, that it is rooted in God's law. This isn't fundamentally a tax that is about exploitation. Uh, so we need not see uh, these tax collectors necessarily as troublemakers that are out to trick Jesus by asking a tricky question of him. Now, as the son of God, Jesus need not pay the tax. That's the point he makes in conversation to Peter. And obviously, he certainly doesn't need to pay a ransom for himself. Nonetheless, though, Jesus does pay the tax. He does it via a miracle, sending Peter fishing uh, for Peter then to find a couple of coins inside of the fish to pay the tax. Jesus does this in order not to cause offence amongst maybe the tax collectors and others. He doesn't want to potentially be a stumbling block to others. And so he pays the tax for himself and for Peter too. In incident number two, the disciples come to Jesus and they ask about their own greatness. Jesus' response is that he instructs them to be as humble as little ones, as humble as children. Then he follows that up by warning them severely against those who might cause uh, the childlike and humble in faith to stumble into sin. In these two incidents, I want us to see three pairings to help you think through them. You might think of them as uh, two sides to a single coin, perhaps, if that helps you follow the imagery of the first incident. First, here is Jesus. He is the great son of the King of Heaven, but he does not pers pursue uh, the rights and privileges of that status. Then on the other side, we have the disciples. They are mere sons of earth, but they desire greatness for themselves. Second, see Jesus, who is concerned about causing offence and being a stumbling block to those that come genuinely inquiring. On the other side of the coin, we see he's warning against those who would be a stumbling block to others. It is a severe warning indeed, isn't it? Third, Peter throws out a line as instructed by Jesus in order to gain the ransom fee for the temple. Then we hear on the other side how those who will lead little ones into sin will be thrown out themselves into the depths of hell. The game of heads or tails is just a game of chance, isn't it? It rests quite literally on the toss of a coin. You throw the coin and you see which side it lands on. Entering the sanctuary presence of God, coming into not his physical temple, uh, but into his eternal presence, his eternal heavenly temple, is not something we should leave to chance, not something that we should let rest on the toss of a coin. The trouble is we cannot pay the fee ourselves, but we do not need to. Jesus is the one who, in demonstrating the humility of a little one, a willingness to set aside his greatness and to take upon himself the sins of others, he has paid our ransom for us. He has actually been thrown down and thrown out for us. And it means, therefore, that we can confidently come into God's temple and we can do so like a little child. Let me pray for us this morning. Heavenly Father, would you grant us simple, childlike faith uh, to trust in Jesus who was thrown down for us, who has paid the ransom for us. 
Let us not seek our own greatness, but trust in him and his work on our behalf. For in his name we pray. Amen.